What's up everyone? Welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and you join me today on our Saturday and it's 6.24 in the morning. Uh, Martijn and I just met up. We enjoyed a lovely sunrise and we are going to Magdeburg Airport in Germany for Race 1000, which is this really cool drag race event with all those crazy cars and we've been invited by GAD Motors to come and have a look uh, and film their stuff over there. So some really cool videos coming up of that event. And well, it's around 500 kilometers over uh, to Magdeburg Airport. So we thought we need a comfortable, fast and relatively economical car to get there. And this is our weapon of choice. It's a BMW 640D GT um, with an M Sport pack. So we have those M wheels, M Sport brakes, uh, some black stuff in the grille and the bumper, little M badge. It's white with a shadow line pack, so black around the windows as well. And those exhaust tips as well with a little spoiler. It's an X drive. And well, we have done a couple of reviews on these cars already. So if you want to check one out, click up here for the 630i POV review uh, for more information, general information about uh, the 6 Series GT. Very lovely interior with this cognac, Dakota leather and all piano black for the rest of the interior. M Sport steering wheel with heating function as well. Really nice. And Martijn is in the back. Hi. He's going Good morning, to, guys. He's going to do a little bit of work back there while I do the first leg of the trip. So our destination is in the navigation. So 627 ETA 1023, 491 kilometers. But Let's see how much we can get off that ETA time. We've got a couple of kilometers left in the Netherlands before we hit the German border, so nothing crazy yet. Um, let me just tell you why we chose this car. This really is uh, it's such such a comfortable car. You sit a bit higher up than a 5 series or a 7 series. It has a 7 series wheelbase. It has it's it's as wide as a 7 series. Uh, it's sort of a combination between a 5 and the 7 series in here. But it is so luxurious. It's so comfortable. You you're just in this cocoon of relaxation. There's nothing about this car that that tells you that it wants to go fast or anything like that. It's just about getting you where you need to go and making sure that you are as comfortable as possible. And well, we've driven it for, I don't know, 200 kilometers now. It is as good as we remembered. And this engine is really, really lovely. And as I said, it's a combination between the 5 Series and the 7 Series. And both those cars have that quad turbo 3 liter inline 6 diesel engine, the M50 diesel with 400 horsepower. So this doesn't have that. This That engine is not available in this car. This is the most powerful diesel, 640D, 320 horsepower, 680 newton meters. So why isn't there an M50D? Should there be one or why are SBMW correct for not supplying that engine in this car or that label in this car? Well, we'll well, we're almost in Germany, so let's find out. Here it is, the Dutch German border and let me show you why we picked this car. Sport mode engage. Oh. Other people engage as well. So 
So the point of this car is that it drives at speed like a normal car drives at regular speeds. Um, let me just show you. This is 200 kilometers an hour. It's, it's really quiet, it's really comfortable, even in sport mode. And it has this really nice feel of torque that when you hit the throttle, it doesn't downshift. It just stays in the same gear and it pulls you through that gear just on torque alone. And that's such a powerful feeling and that's actually really, really comfortable because it is really, it's really calm. And this is also why we love the Autobahn so much. I mean, it is busier than I thought it would be at this hour, but still, you can just, you can make good time here. This is 230 kilometers an hour, cruising along. It's a bit bumpy here. I'll just switch to Comfort Plus. Yes, that's better. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 5.3 seconds. Top speed limited at 250. So we'll give that a try later on as well. As standard, this car actually has air suspension at the rear and you can get it as an option as well at the front axle, uh, which makes this car just a dream to drive really. As I said, we've got an M Sport pack on this one. That means it's a bit more sporty to look at, but you also get those M Sport brakes. And you'd think, well, why would I want M Sport brakes on a, on a cruiser like this? Well, when you drive on the Autobahn, like we do, it is really nice to have good brakes because you sometimes you have to brake really, really hard uh, when you drive at high speed. So it's always nice to have a, a pair of good brakes, especially at the front. And to keep all those Newton meters in check, this car has a standard X drive as well. Because 680 Newton meters on the rear wheels would be very challenging uh, in wet conditions, for instance. And now let's get back to the big question at hand why doesn't this car have an m50d and should it have one or not well let me just start by saying that i really love that engine i think that's insane we drove both the m550d and the 750d uh, with the same engine same power everything but as you've noticed, in the 5 Series it's called an M550D. It's an M Performance model. In the 7 Series it's not. So I understand that they didn't put the, the M badge on this car like they didn't with the 7 Series. This is top speed by the way, 250 kilometers an hour, 52, 53. So I understand why they didn't put an M badge on it, but this car would be so great with that engine. That engine suits this car really well. So it would have been cool if they would have just gone the 7 Series way and, and just call this a 650D. I think, why not? I, I understand why they didn't want to put an M badge on it, but then don't. Don't put an M badge on it, but at least give us that engine. Because this car is really suitable for long hauls it's as i said it's super comfortable you've also got that hatchback with a huge boot um, which is actually bigger than the boot of a 5 series touring so i don't think i can show you in a better way why we chose this car i mean this is it all righty this is all filled up again and i'm going to take a seat in the back and let my professional driver hello sir take care of the rest hello alfred
And well, you can actually get a sort of an executive pack for the rear seats in this car, which means you get heated seats, uh, these screens and, oh man, that's fast, G-forces. Uh, and you get um, an adjustable rear seat as well, or the backrest at least. But it's not that adjustable. Um, and these little pillows for your head. So compared to a 7 Series, this is actually quite comfortable. Of course you have that executive lounge in the 7 Series which gives you uh, those insane seats uh, that are super adjustable and all that cool stuff. But you actually get a lot of headroom here because the roof is so high and they actually fixed the problem with the 5 GT that the headroom was too limited. And I have to say it is really, really comfortable. It's, it feels really spacious in here. It also has these blinds, which are really fast. Let's get the remote. And see what we can do with this. So we can check out the navigation. Wow, I can actually I can actually use the navigation system right here so I can put an address in there and I don't even have to talk with my professional driver something for the music and mobile phone stuff like that driving information well as you can see it's not that interesting can't do that much but you know we're at 240 kilometers an hour now 245 it is so comfortable, so relaxing and well, previously Speed camera! Oh my god! <laughs> I told you we needed those M Sport brakes <laughs> It worked really well um, So that was 240 to 120 in about 100 meters uh, What was I saying? Previously I always understood why people didn't buy the 5 GT. I mean, BMW built, built it to sort of give people an alternative to the 7 Series without driving a 7 Series. But with this one, this one is much more in between the 5 Series and the 7 Series. And if I was looking at a 5 Series sedan, I would also consider this one. Because it, it does feel a little more luxurious. It is more spacious in here. The look of it, I mean, some people like it, some people hate it. I actually quite like it. I'm kind of running out of things to tell here, so uh, I'm going to end it. We're almost there, it's 9.11, so that's not bad at all. Average speed of about 200 kilometers an hour. And well, as I said, we're going to check out race 1000, so stay tuned for those videos, or maybe they're already online. You can also check out this POV review of a 750D and you can decide for yourself if you think that that engine should be in this car. You can also check out this POV reviews playlist and you can subscribe by clicking the big button right here. Thanks for watching guys, hope to see you at the next one, bye.